My name is Jen Coyne, and I'm here at the WabTech Additive Lab in Grove City, Pennsylvania, in the U.S., where we're employing additive manufacturing technology to solve some of our toughest technology and supply chain problems. I'm joined here today by Brett Hare, who is a design engineer on the team. I've asked him here today to talk to us about a design he made for the metal binder jet additive manufacturing process. Hi, Brett. Hi, Jen. So let's talk about this part here. Why did you start looking at this part for additive? This part is an example of a space-constrained door bracket. The original design was not robust enough for the loads it experienced in operation, but there wasn't enough room to make the existing fabricated part bulkier. With additive, you have much more design freedom, and you're able to put material only where it is needed for calculations. So how do you figure out where to put the material? I use a software process called topology optimization, which is a method of optimizing material within a defined design space with defined loads and boundary conditions. Think of it like whittling away material until you've achieved the most efficient design possible. Hmm, okay, that sounds pretty cool. So what made this part a good fit for binder jetting? Binder jetting is good for a relatively simple, medium to large volume stainless steel parts. It also has to fit in the build box size constraints. If those criteria are met, binder jetting is the fastest, least expensive way to produce high volumes of metal additive manufacturing parts. This example fits all that criteria Binder Jet was the best choice for additive manufacturing for this application. Makes sense. Can you tell us how the process works? Sure. Just like any additive manufacturing process, you start with the 3D model. The 3D model is optimized for the process. In this case, we use topology optimization to find the best shape for the requirements. Next, the build software slices the file into 2D layers. Each of these layers acts as a blueprint to tell the machine where to selectively apply binder during printing. The set of layers is loaded into the printer and powder is deposited in a thin layer on the powder bed. The inkjet printheads then apply binder to the layer of powder for the 2D blueprints we just talked about. The printer spreads another fresh layer of powder and then the process repeats itself until the full part is finished, creating a green part. This just means the part is only glued together with binder at this stage. It has to go through a few more final steps before it's ready. The first of these post-printing steps is curing the parts in an oven to increase the strength of the green state part. The parts are removed from the loose powder bed and placed in a vacuum sintering furnace for full densification. After sintering, the parts can be 3D scanned for dimensional accuracy and final machine where necessary. That's really interesting. I can see how this process would really maximize the throughput of parts. This has all been really exciting. Thanks for walking us through it. You're welcome.